Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to change colours at the end of a row and also at the same time eliminate some of the work required for sewing in the ends. Um, and then I'm also going to show you a way to sew in the ends which reduces bulk and also uh, looks good and doesn't um, destroy the elasticity or um, gauge of your pattern. And the basic um, principle, as you know from sewing in ends, is that when you sew in an end you travel along a few stitches and then you go back the same direction you came um, whilst trapping in another stitch so you're not just unravelling um, what you've just done. Um, it's the going in one direction and then going back in the other, that's what makes the um, end secure. So I've come to the penultimate stitch and I'm actually going to change the yarn colour in the final step of the last stitch. So if you're making a double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, you've got three on the hook, yarn over, draw off two. And instead of completing the final step, you're actually going to cut the yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew in, but not too much so you're not wasting precious yarn. That's usually about enough. Then I'm going to get my the next colour that I want to join. And again, just leaving kind of shortish tail. And I'm going to complete the last part of the stitch with the new colour. So don't worry if it's all a bit baggy, because we can sort that out in a minute. Now I'm going to chain three, which counts as the first stitch of the next right row. I'm going to turn my work and then I'm going to um, continue in the pattern which is uh, three, uh, two double crochets into the same stitch where I've just joined that new colour. So I'm going to yarn over to make the stitch. So before I go into that stitch I'm actually just going to tuck my hook under the two tail ends of yarn before I go into that stitch. And then I'm just going to sort of hold them down with my thumb and I'm going to finish making the first stitch. I'm going to keep hold of those tails and now I'm going to make second stitch in the same spot. Um, and now the next part of the pattern is three double crochet into the next stitch. So I'm still going to include those tail ends when I'm doing these uh, three double crochet. So they're just laying across the top of my hook there. So I'm not actually crocheting with them, I'm just kind of crocheting around them. Two, three. So with this pattern, the next stitch is to skip one and then double crochet. So now I'm going to leave those um, because it it doesn't really work when you're skipping stitches. It only works with when you've got solid stitches one after the other. So this would work just as well if you had um, a series of just single double crochets or maybe slightly different pattern that was a cluster, that would also work. So as you can see this looks a bit loose and baggy but we don't need to worry about it. We just give it a very gentle tug and that sorts it out. So you can see I've done all of this edge in exactly the same way and it looks really good. So I'm just going to carry on in the pattern and then when I get to the other end um, I'll show you one more time and then I'll show you how I sew in the ends to um, keep everything nice and neat without too much bulk down the side of your fabric. I'm going to show you again. Come to the end of this round, I'm ready to make the last stitch. So remember, I don't complete the stitch, I go up to the penultimate part of the stitch. So yarn over into the stitch, pull up a loop, I've got three. Yarn over, draw off two. Now I'm not going to complete that. I'm going to get my scissors, cut the yarn, leaving long enough tail for sewing. You only need a little bit. I'm going to join this lovely, bright, cheerful 
orangey yellow yarn. So again, I'm just leaving just a tail long enough to sew in, not too much because I don't want to waste it. Then I'm going to finish off this double crochet by yarning over and pulling through. I'm going to start the next row with a chain three to represent a double crochet. I'm going to turn my work round. Just going to make sure the two tail ends are towards me. And I'm going to continue in the pattern, which is two double crochet in the first stitch. So I'm just going to make sure my hook comes up under those two tails before I go into the stitch. So they're just laying across my hook there. Go to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off two, yarn over, draw off two. Make another double crochet, making sure I'm still trapped in those two tails. And the next step is three double crochet in the next stitch. And again, I'm just making sure that those tails are between the stitch that I'm going to work and the loops on my hook. And just be careful not to work them. You're just working around them. And then I'm going to stop with this particular pattern because the next step is skipping a stitch. So it doesn't look very good if you do it when you skip a stitch because obviously you can see them. They're not being hidden by anything. So the next thing I'm going to show you is then how to finish uh, weaving in the ends because um, as explained before the basic principle of weaving in ends is that the, the yarn goes in one direction um, and then back in another direction whilst making sure you catch in a tail or a, a, a part of a stitch so that you're not just undoing what you've just done. So when I come to sew these ends in, we've already done one part, it's already going one way under a few stitches, now we need to go back the other way. So by catching it in, we've eliminated one step and saved ourselves a bit of time. So with these tail ends, what I like to do with this particular pattern is if I sew both of them into this corner, it can add a bit of bulk just all along the edge here, which I don't really want. So what I do is I try and um, match up the colors and run this one down through a stitch into this congested area and then this one can just catch a stitch and go back into this congested area so I'm spreading the bulk so to speak. So if your tail ends are quite small like these I recommend threading doing the um, threading with the, through the work with the needle first like this. So when I go through a double crochet I almost do like a running stitch so um, I'm going down to the stitch, up through the stitch and down, just so that it's less obvious. Now I'm going to thread the needle. If, you're, if you don't have precious yarn, you can leave it longer the tails than what I have done. Because this is hand dyed yarn, I, I don't like to waste it. So, I'm going down through the double. And then I'm just going to catch the other leg of that double crochet and then I'm going to go into this little congested area of stitches there. And then that's all I need to do for that. I can trim that off and that is nice and secure because we've caught it in with the crochet and then we've gone back with the stitch. So let's also do it with this tail here. So I think I'm actually going to catch that stitch there before I go back through this congested area. So it's, it, this isn't the best needle actually, I prefer to have a much sharper needle because if you can actually push it through the stitches rather than just running them along the inside so that everything's loose like that, if you can actually get it through the stitches so that it's really tight in there, that is actually much better, it's less likely to come loose. Again, the tail was a bit short, so I've threaded the needle first, uh, sorry, put the needle through the stitches first and then threaded it after. So, that can save you quite a lot of time, especially if you're doing 
um, a really a blanket that's got loads of different colour changes or even loads of different motifs. Um, it's a time saver um, without compromising on the look or the security of your ends of your yarn. So I hope you enjoyed that, um, but before I go, I just want to tell you um, about this stitch pattern, which is called the Feather and Fan, and you can find that on my blog, and I've also made a YouTube video with instructions, so you can um, go and look for that if you like it. This beautiful yarn is hand dyed by Witchcrafty Lady, who you can find on Etsy. So if you liked this video, please uh, click like and if you would also like to subscribe that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you.